everyone, so I have just watched the National Theatre stream of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, the Shakespeare adaption with Gwendolyn Christie was the big star in it because I think this was just after Game of Thrones she kind of did this. And I knew a couple of friends that seen it live when it was in the cinema and they kept saying, oh, Ronnie, you'd love it, like, you should go see it. And I never really got the chance to, but there's fantastic things happened in lockdown where I'm getting to see all these shows that I probably wouldn't have. Um, and I've just sat and watched it and oh my goodness, it is my favourite Shakespeare adaption I've ever witnessed. It is fantastic. Um, I seen my The Summer's Night's Dream for the first time in college when the class, um, so there's two HNC classes and we did Animal Farm and the class next door did Midsummer's Night's Dream and um, they did it set like in the 80s. And I, I went and I realised the vibe of the show and I realised, oh, this is actually a really funny, feel-good Shakespeare play. Um, and for me, like, um, performing Shakespeare was always so difficult. Like, it just doesn't roll off my tongue to me. For me, it's a, like another language to learn. So I envy anybody that can get up there and say Shakespeare and make it fabulous. And I've always said I like Shakespeare in a modern, like with a modern twist or in a modern way. Um, and a friend of mine in college, I think it was, her name was Catherine, I think it was Catherine Tosney, um, she told me to start with Midsummer's Night's Dream, so she gave me the version of it that was done at the Globe, um, which I absolutely loved, um, and then, yeah, like, I just always felt like it was always one that was really feel good, and if it's done right, it can be fabulous, and this, oh my god, this version of it, is probably the the penult like the ultimate version. I don't know how anybody's going to top this one, but um yeah. So if anybody doesn't know the story, um it's kind of intertwining plot lines, all set in a fairy magical forest. Um, it's like um there's a wedding and there's four young lovers and um <laughs> basically the there's one girl that's in love with um one guy. I'm trying to I'm really bad with names, but I think we've got. Um, oh gosh, I'm really bad with Shakespeare names. So basically, you've got one girl and one guy, and she boy loves girl and boy loves guy. Then you've got another girl and another guy. Boy loves girl, but guy loves this girl. <laughs> um, and it's kind of just them kind of all fighting it out, and especially um, this girl, like she's not happy, which is so funny. And then you have like there's fairies involved. There's Titania and Oberyn. Um, and there's a character called Bottom, who is like always been my favourite character. Oh my god. Um, I never caught his second name, but um, the guy that plays him in this is called Hamid, and he stole it. Like, he was so good. They were all amazing. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of like one plot, and then there's a plot where Bottom's involved, where it's like for the big giant wedding that it's all around, um, it's like a drama group kind of <laughs> rehearsing a play. Um, and then there's fairies involved, Oberyn and Tatiana. Now, I have seen it, and I knew, like, as soon as I've seen this version, I text my pal, and I was like, they've done something different. Um, usually, um, Oberyn and Tatiana, Oberyn's trying to, like, get back at Tatiana, like, because she's um, basically just being a bitch. And uh, he kind of casts a spell on her, and whatever she lays her eyes on next, she'll fall in love with, and get this character called Puck, who's also fabulous. Um, so basically, he's like his little servant and goes around um but in this version they switched it up and so it's Tatiana who's actually pissed off at Oberyn and does the same <laughs> does it to him um which makes it even funnier because I knew that Bottom um Bottom turns into a like a they call it an ass Bottom turns into a donkey at one point and that is um who like Tatiana falls in love with for this love potion thing that they do um but the switch up here with Oberyn having the love potion put on him is genius <laughs> it is it made it like a hundred times funnier than I've ever seen it. Like, it works with a woman, but my god, it works even better with a guy. Like, it's so funny. Um, and yeah, like the whole cast were fabulous. Um, I'm really bad with names, but Gwendolyn Christie was just fabulous queen lover. Um, the guy who plays Puck, I, I can't remember his first name. It's like, oh gosh, I, I won't say names in case I get it wrong. But Puck was fabulous. Oberon was fabulous bottom was the whole cast were the fairies like they were all doing acrobatics and they were all up in the air and I was, I was watching like what and then there was like this fabulous scene at the end where like um Tatiana and Oberon are like dancing and Florence and Machine's playing and the whole audience are like circling the stage and 
it just looked magical. It looked exactly what midsummer should be magical, and it was so uplifting, so feel good, so much like so funny, um, and the music as well. There's a lot of like surprise little like music that gets popped in there, and yeah, it felt like they were wearing costumes. Um, some of them were wearing costumes from like, um, you know, like kind of Shakespearean because I could, I could see like. Gwendolyn Christie's costume was quite like, you know, and the, the four lovers, they were wearing costumes like that weren't from, oh, were they? Oh, no, they were. It was a bit of both. It was a bit, some of it was like modern costume and some of it was like traditional Shakespearean in my opinion. Um, yeah, I think it's Gwendolyn Christie's dress I felt was like that. But honestly, like they really mesh together. And um, I feel like if you haven't seen a Shakespeare play and you want to get into it, this is the one to watch. Like, this is the one that will get you into it. I think it's, for me, it's the most easiest one to understand. And if it's done well, then you understand it better. Because I've seen ones that um, they do it, but you don't quite get a line or you don't, and you miss something. And I have to like go on my phone and kind of look up what the plot is. Whereas this, they don't miss anything. They make sure that everybody, like, you know, that plot is like, this is what's happening now, um, and get it through the language. I don't know how people do that, but it's so cool. Um, but yeah, it's streaming right now. It's on National Theatre. I think it's streaming for a week. Go and watch it. It is just, I was just blown away by it. I've literally just finished streaming it right there. It's just finished. Um, but yeah, like that cast are fantastic. And oh man, I wish I could like go see it live now. Um, but God knows how long that'll be. Um, so yeah, so if even if you're not into Shakespeare, I would definitely give it a go because this is the one to watch that you might go, oh, actually, um, I get it. Um, but yeah, like if you want to really get into Shakespeare, but you don't know like where to start, start with this. This will really throw you in. Um, and you want feel good to start you because the more serious, serious Shakespeare, I think is harder to follow. So this is definitely the one to go for. Or if you just need a really good laugh and you're feeling really down, yeah. So thank you National Theatre for streaming that. Thank you so much. Um, they're also taking donations, obviously, to help, um, all, to help the arts and help the theatre. And so um, it's uh, you can donate ten pounds, twenty pounds. Um, it's all on there. So go and do that. Go and help them out and go watch it. It's fab. Loved it. Thank you.